Bringing home a min pin is going to be one of the best things that you ever do. Now, bringing home a puppy is a very exhausting time as well. And so one of the biggest issues that people have is when they don't prepare up front. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about a few different ways that you can prepare up front. Therefore, you're gonna be more successful whenever you bring them home. Hey guys, my name is Nate. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time with us. Thanks for being with us. Let us know down in the comments how many puppies you have at home or how many men pins you've ever owned. And that would just, you know, we'll just start counting them up. So the first thing we wanna talk about are house rules. So just like you have house rules or rules for anything within your family, having house rules established ahead of time will definitely make sure everyone's on the same page. House rules can be multiple to the things that you're going to be able to come up with and discuss with your family. But one, a few examples here that we'll talk about is number one is establish a place where the puppy is going to be. And so establishing that place, you also are going to be establishing who is going to be the one that will be able to go into the area and actually mess with the puppy or bring the puppy out of that area or put them in there. For a new puppy in a new home, they're going to be scared, they're gonna be a little anxious. And so having one or two designated people that are the only ones that go in to take them to their crate or take them to their bed will definitely make it a lot easier when it comes to, like I said, those first days especially and they don't know what's going on. You know, help them calm down. So definitely let the kids see them and enjoy them and everything but make sure they enjoy them in a controlled environment and it's not in those specific areas that not only as their puppies but as they get older there should continue to be a safe haven area uh, for your min pin another rule is going to be when it comes to let's say training who's going to be the one to train them and what are you going to train them on you got to be careful with that as well so make sure that you guys are on the same page who's doing the training how you're doing the training everything with that so establishing that is definitely a need and definitely will make uh, your training go a lot further, a lot faster. Another house rule could be simply as how we take care of our toys, how we take care of our items around, right? You're gonna have a puppy that's gonna be chewing and wanting to bite on everything. So you definitely wanna make sure that certain items like toys or things that you don't wanna get chewed up are definitely put away even more so than before you got your min pin. So definitely establish that with the family up front that we need to be a lot more careful on putting things down low where the puppy, especially as the puppy continues to grow, that we're able to take care of that and that we don't leave things laying around or they're gonna be sadly mistaken when they're brand new Avengers action figures gets all chewed up and they blame you because that's what they're gonna do. So make sure that they um, do that and that it's established up front and this will help. Also, you, your puppy will be trying to eat everything as well. So make sure that they don't swallow something obviously that um, could potentially hurt them. Another thing that you can do when it comes to kind of establishing things up front is actually establish a schedule. And this is an actual, you know, a Google calendar, you know, some type of calendar, you know, written out electronically that you actually block off time for the puppy. Now this doesn't mean that you have exactly down to the minute times, but have actual time blocks in there. Have time blocks in there for potty training. When do you want to take them outside? Um, so look at you know time lapse there, when you're gonna take them outside and kind of who's gonna be the one taking them outside. So you need to establish that up front. If it's not gonna be the same person, then who is responsible to kind of take over those duties as someone there. So kind of have a schedule and have someone's name next to it. That'll definitely help. Um, and another thing is training. We talked a little bit about this, but um, actually block off training times. One of my favorite training times, if you haven't seen any of my other videos, is during um, when they eat. So for puppies, they eat more than about two times a day, so they usually eat three or four times a day. So at minimum, you should be doing small training sessions with them. But be careful because during these training sessions, you need to make sure whoever is doing the training that they are doing the same level of training type of training they're they're saying things the same way and do not forget that they are training on the same thing a puppy does not need to receive one command practice in the morning and then a different command practice at lunch and then another third command practice at dinner uh, so if you're not careful and you're not communicating and like i said putting it on some type of written schedule then I tell you now, you do not be surprised when you're trying to get them to sit while someone else is trying to get them to lay while someone else is trying to get them to stay. So definitely make sure you have that established and um, that will definitely make your training more effective and it'll make it less frustrating for you and definitely less frustrating for your new men pin for sure. Another one that you need to think about for a schedule is crate training. 
Now, when it comes to trade training, it's not just training, hey, say I'm leaving. So if you have the opportunity and are able to be at home, either you've taken a little bit of uh, time off when you've got your new puppy, or maybe someone works from the house or different things, you know, we're still kind of in this environment right now with that, then take advantage of that and have them spend time in their crate. Don't just wait until you're trying to leave them in there for hours at a time leave them you know schedule it say hey oh every hour or two i'm going to give them five to ten minutes in their crates and take them on you know an adventure to their crate and once again it's in a nice awesome airy dinned area that's set up um, we did a video kind of about crate training it kind of goes into more detail how you can kind of set set the area up for them but set that area up and enjoy uh enjoy taking them over there like to make it kind of a um, place that they don't go all the time necessarily but it's kind of like a you know magical place right and therefore that will hopefully get them used to and they'll be more uh, calm when it comes to enjoying their time in their crate but don't do it for too long but do it often and not just one day you know a week you know often every day you've got to do it so put it on that schedule and you'll uh, reap rewards whenever they're going through that process of becoming crate trained uh, dogs for sure Okay, so we're about to go on to the third one here. If you're getting value out of this, do me a favor and please hit the like button and just obliterate it actually if you don't mind. The more you do that, the more this video is pushed out to other future men pen owners and we can continue to bring new ones into the fold and make this breed you know, grow even more uh, throughout the YouTube community and just you know, throughout the, the world in general. So please hit the like button and we'll continue on right now. Okay, another one that you can uh, either prepare before you get your men pin or at least prepare before you go to it, and that is your first vet appointment. Now, just like um, whenever you take your kids to, say, the doctor, you want to make sure that you have questions answered that you, you're going to have. Now, for me, like I said, when, when my kids go to the doctor, my wife and I, we sit down and talk beforehand. We say, hey, is there anything going on that we need to make sure? Um, that especially if it's like a wellness check right so if you have a sickness obviously they're going for that sickness but if it's a wellness check you don't always think about that until you show up there and they're sitting there and then the doctor or the vets oh so if you have any questions for me and then of course you're like yeah um and then you go blank right so definitely make sure that you write down questions before and that's right write them down don't feel bad to pull out a list to ask your vet and on another note with that is don't limit yourself to just very basic health questions right when it comes to your vet i don't think we use them as as much of an advocate as we uh, we should so when you're going to see them you know ask them the health questions but also ask them, you know, behavioral questions about your dog or experiences they've had and, and leverage that. Um, ask them, yeah, just lessons learned. Now, they may not be a specific min pen veterinarian, but they're going to have a lot of experiences and have seen a lot of dogs in their career in their time. And for most vets, while they are busy and they have stuff to do as well, seeing that you come in there and you have questions and you have good active questions are going to see you as this um, not just a reactive breeder but someone that's going to notice things and pretty much is going to be bringing them in as needed to investigate things and hopefully discover things about your uh, puppy as you go through their life and they become a you know a grown-up dog um, before something's just too late and you become more of a reactionary mode so definitely like i said don't feel bad bring your questions and then guess what when you get the answers to the questions, here's kind of the secret sauce of this. Write them down right then. There's nothing worse than doing all of this of thinking of the questions, writing down the questions, pulling the piece of paper out, and asking the question, and then getting the answer, and then coming home and trying to relay that answer, and you can't remember it, and now that was pretty much for nothing. So definitely make sure that you write the answers down. Like I said, don't, don't feel bad. This is the time that you are paying your veterinarian to speak with you and to um, look at and you know give an exam to your men pen. So don't feel bad to use their time and make sure you get every ounce of you know, like the money you're paying them. So write stuff down, you know, ask follow-on questions, make sure it's clear. Because what you don't want is to get home and then now you're sitting there trying to Google it or you're just blindly trusting people on youtube so don't do that either but do that do your research talk to your vet and 
leverage that time with them. Um, it will definitely be some of the best time that you will spend in getting the answers that you need. So we kind of talked about some ways that you can kind of get set up with your puppy and do these things beforehand. So um, your homework today is to go right now if you are getting a puppy soon and start working on these things. Write out a list at the top, you know, establish those house rules, start thinking of a schedule and then start thinking up good questions for your veterinarian for that first visit. And this is something that you need to continue on as you go throughout your time with your puppy as they continue to get older. It doesn't just stop when they're a puppy. So if you are getting a min pin puppy soon and you're kind of freaking out about it, I don't blame me, I've been there. We did a video talking about that first night home with your min pin puppy. So we'll link that video right up here. So go check out that video. Thanks for joining us. Make sure you hit the like and the subscribe button and we'll see you over in that video.